As I mentioned, the latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be, to be higher than previously anticipated. Hello, uh, welcome to Financial Stockholm. I'm Christopher Crystal, and uh, these are our thoughts, uh, what we're seeing in the Swedish press, uh, what we're looking at. And none of this is investment advice. You should really be using this as uh, you know discussion points with your investment advisor uh, if you're looking into the Scandinavian region. Um, so with, uh, with the markets today, uh, we have uh, continued interest in the banks. Uh, Credit Suisse is borrowing 50 billion from the uh, Swiss government, uh, 50 billion francs. And um, you see that bidders for Silicon Valley Bank are still trying to go through and uh, the auction's not settled. You know, it's uh, from names like Goldman Sachs to KKR, uh, as opposed to companies like JP Morgan, which, uh, and Bank of America, which are just sitting there calling the clients and saying, hey, transfer your account here. So, um, but there's a continued fear of systematic risk within the banking sector. And um, so with the, uh, with the rate hikes coming next week, uh, we'll see how that goes. We did get a slight break uh, on the uh, producer price index in the US. Uh, initially it looks up, but overall they're down 0.1. Um, and point two, so you're uh, you're looking at a slowly declining economy, hopefully. Um, but remember, Powell said in Senate testimony, you continue to have two for one people, you know. So for every job, you have two people applying, um, and he's happy to see a couple percentage points higher in unemployment, or maybe one percentage point. So. You know, the way these Keynesian economists who are uh, sitting in the Fed like to see the economy running, um, they like to have it at around 6% unemployment uh, that they feel is an ideal rate. And so uh, anywhere from this 3.4 up to 6 is going to be fine as long as it's not 3.4. Um, and uh, so that means there are going to be job losses in the U.S. And, uh, you know, you're, you're seeing that, you know, there are companies laying people off. Uh, you know, it, it's happening. And it's uh, diversified across sectors. It's not just technology companies. So it's not being widely reported, but you are seeing the layoffs coming. Um, and so, uh, but the story with, uh, with the um, Silicon Valley Bank is really, this teaches you the lesson of you buy good companies with good management and good investments. And um, this was one of these banks that was kind of like a unicorn corral had all these technology companies that have gone public. Gavin Newsom, former private equity guy, uh, governor now in, in California, it, you know he had his he had an account there. Um, and then if you think about the bulk, the majority of the accounts had two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. These are the one percent. So the people who had accounts there are uh, very wealthy and made very wealthy. Uh, with recent money market or uh, market uh, IPOs. Um, so the quality of their investments and then also the people who were managing the, uh, the bank really didn't seem to understand how inflation works and how a uh, rate uh, cycle would work and raising the rates and buying bonds that were yielding 1.8 when they would be later on yielding five um, you know, after hikes. You know, you're talking about people who have uh, doctorates who don't seem to understand what they're preaching. Um, but I think, I think if you look at the uh, Scandinavian banks uh, and maybe you wanna read about pawn briefs, uh, that, that's the kind of the mortgage principle that we use here. Uh, and it goes all the way back to uh, the Dutch and the Germans. And it talks about, you can read about how um, we, uh, we, we set up the mortgage structure like that. So you have banks like uh, uh, STB store brand, um, you have DNB, which used to be the Den Norske Bank. Uh, you have Svenska Handelsbank in SHB, you have SCB, Scandinavian Shield Bank in Nordea, which is NDA, uh, you have Danske Bank, uh, those were our larger banks, then you have some smaller banks, um, Avanza is an online bank, you have a company called Nordnet as well, um, but uh, Nordnet keeps going back and forth between public and private, um, and then you have Erman, and uh, you have Oland's Bank in um, and these are the smaller banks and they're focusing on uh, individual clients, high net worth individuals. So, um, 
talk with your advisors about those if you're looking at the banks. But remember, we had a very strong performing bank sector before all of this. Uh, one of the banks I did not mention was Swedbank. And uh, that's because of all the management issues that they've had. Uh, and you know they, they recently got this fine and they're waiting for what their sanctions uh, fine is from the US. So um, you wanna go with the top management. Um, and you know this is all going to have a heavier carryover onto the Swedish economy, and uh, the real estate sector is uh, getting hurt. So housing sales are already down. Uh, apartment sales maybe are recovering. Uh, they were starting to show signs of life, um, but we have a uh, we have a place called Slusen in the middle of town or on, on the south side of town, and that's a major bus station and major train station, subway station for people, and. Um, the cost overrun there are 21 billion uh, Swedish uh, kroner, or you know, 2.1 billion roughly euros, and um, that's not a good sign. Uh, and there's a question about the bond payments that are upcoming, what that's going to do, and uh, if that can be handled. So um, you know, that's we're looking kind of tough. So those are sectors where you could look at, and you could still uh, you know talk to your advisors if you want to do a short. Um, some might be telling you to do long, but it might be still very early uh, because during this rate cycle, um, which looks to continue till at least June, uh, would be a, a disadvantageous time unless you're locking in your rate now. Um, so, and in anticipation of it going up, but then, you know, you have to wait and see what happens afterwards. So, but uh, the big problem in the Nordics is that we do have a lot of uh, volatility on the food. Uh, and we have very high inflation in Sweden. You've seen inflation in Norway, you've seen inflation in Finland, um, but we've had it higher. So our food price in inflation was over 20%. Finland has 16.3. That was released this morning. And so there's a real question in Sweden of why do we have a higher uh, you know, food price? And one of the reasons why is our electricity prices. You know, Finland has less people. Uh, Finland just opened a nuclear plant. Uh, Finland's had it running. It hasn't been running 100%, but it has been running. So they've kind of stabilized their electrical grid. And, um, you know, Norway has more gas and oil than, uh, you know, than they need. They're able to sell. So um, that's it. But we had a, uh, there was a, a debate panel on the uh, government TV channel last night. And they had uh, one of our, we have three major chains here in Sweden that control the food distribution. And that's ECA, uh, which was public and now is private. Um, and then you had uh, uh, you have a company called Coop. Uh, and that's a, uh, I think the origins are with Norway and it's really a cooperative, it's not publicly traded. And then you have a company, um, you know, uh, it's called Hemshop and uh, Willys. And those are owned by Axe Food. And uh, so that's the uh, Axelson family that uh, controls that. Um, and that, that is one of the few that you can buy. Uh, and they're, uh, they're better to their employees than say a company like Lidl, which is a German company. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, different moves that they make, which make some of these companies less Swedish. And that's why they get a worse reputation. They do things like, you know, have part-time uh, staffing so they can fire somebody at any time, uh, which is not uh, heard of in Sweden. That's um, <clears throat> so... Um, but the, the problem is, is that the food prices are going up and the uh, owners of the grocery stores are saying, well, it's not our fault. The food's going up because we're getting charged more. So we have to pass along the price. But the problem is, is that if you look at the wealth that these people are creating for themselves, they're regularly known as the Ferrari buyers. Um, and if you look in different parts of, say, you know, town like Stockholm, uh, on the south side, you can find that the, you know, in, within the top 10, four of them are going to be eco owners. Um, so they're, they're making a lot of money. They do work very hard. Um, but there's a question right now by the consumer to say, hey, we can't afford to buy food. How is it these guys are still making millions? And then the government is saying, well, you know, we're for free market. So we have to, you know, let them set the price. Uh, and then the left party is saying, well, there should be price controls like they're doing in France. And, um, and what you really come down to here is this, the market is really not an open market. So it's very difficult to set up a grocery store. Um, and it's very hard to get into the, uh, so the, the barriers to entry don't look hard, 
but they are because it's pretty much government controlled. And so um, uh, something has to be worked out because even now these people are getting uh, threats of violence and all they are is ECA employees, ECA owners, and that's not right. Uh, so uh, the, you know, really um, final conclusion though on the uh, Ukraine war, um, you know, we're, we're sending uh, something like 10 tanks um, that we had. Finland is um, getting ratification notice on Friday. So uh, good luck to them on St. Patrick's Day. Um, and then on the back of the uh, issue that you had between Russia and the US and the Reaper drone, um, there's a report that there are more Russian ships in the Black Sea. That's not surprising. Uh, and it really, I think what is surprising or scary is the potential for full uh, scale war. Uh, well, we have the meetings with uh, President Xi and Putin coming up. And then after that, he'll be meeting with Zelensky. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully we get away from a war and uh, to a peace talk, which could potentially be uh, orchestrated by uh, President Xi. So um, if you wanted to know how you can make money in the market, well, then you should look at the munitions companies. Um, and, uh, you know, BAE bought up a lot of the Swedish companies. Um, but, you know, talk about this with your uh, advisor and figure out your investment strategy um, because you can always make money in the market. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully you're subscribed. So, you know, remember in the market, you can go long, you can go short, you can have a sh short term strategy, uh, long term strategy, and uh, include the notes. And the notes are, uh, can be found on Substack. So, uh, you know, that you can find in the comments and uh, we'll wish you the best of luck and lots of success in the market. Thank you. Bye.